How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Software Inc. And welcome to something that's a little bit overdue at this point. I think we spent a little bit too much time in the skyscraper, but today we're finally sitting down to build Nerdrosoft's very own headquarters. We're on a city map, so we have some buildings around us. We have parking lots and roads and all of that good stuff. And honestly, I really like these city maps. I, I'm not a big fan of the one map that you can just have you know, a building that's infinitely large. You can have a building the size of the entire map. That's a bit much for me. I don't need that. I don't really feel like I'm going to need thousands of employees with this particular version of Nerdrosoft. But we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Let's talk a little bit about what I've got going on right now. So this entire thing started with the idea of having this sort of printing space at the back of the building. I wanted my couriers to be able to drive right up to the bays, load up their vans and head on out. And obviously they don't do that. That's not how Software Inc. works. But I like the idea that they could do that. I like the visual that, you know, they, they could theoretically back the vans up and load it up and away they go. Again, they don't, but they could. Now, I was going to keep that printing space as just one little floor there. I was going to have a bunch of pallets and that was essentially going to be it. My thinking was we'd have a lot of sort of the service stuff at this end of the building. So we'd have the printing, we'd have security. We're going to do a little kitchen in here shortly as well. And then that would all be sort of relegated to this side section of the building. But as we go on here, I start to change things up a little bit. I'm wanting to do all these different corridors and hallways as well. And eventually we're going to be moving all of those printers upstairs as well. So we're going to have printing essentially across two floors and the space where we have the printers right now is eventually going to be taken up by our main production server and that's going to be our hosting server basically so king doom is going to go on there nerdrosoft play is going to go on there but again that's stuff that we'll talk about actually in the gameplay section of the video a little bit later on now moving away from all of that this left space where we're putting these larger rooms into is actually going to be the bulk of the building. This is where the majority of my employees are going to be working. Now, of course, it needed a nice sort of elegant, grand entrance way. I want to play around with some pillars and lots of glass and just make this thing look as good as it can possibly be. And I was going to have that little sort of grassy area on the right where we have the two windows. I was going to have a gap right down the building that was connected entirely by that little corridor, but it just felt like it would be a bit weird to do that. So we have it at the front, not at the back. And I wasn't sure if I was going to keep that, but eventually as we go on here and change the building, start pushing and pulling walls around, it starts to come together. And I, I end up with a building that I'm really happy with. So hopefully you will be as well. At the moment, just putting together the, the atrium here, something I really wanted to do based on what we'd seen in the apartment building was this thing with sort of the glass walkways. So we have our elevator on the left side. And if you want to go to the right side of the building upstairs, you go up the elevator and across one of these walkways. And they're also going to be how you get back to some of the development spaces as well and back to the stairs too. So having these walkways here, having this atrium that goes up three floors, I just, I absolutely love how that space turned out. I love that as an entranceway to uh to the building and it's yeah i'm i'm very very pleased with it now at this stage i'm sort of toying around with the different ideas that i have for how this building's gonna be something i have got into doing with software inc is putting the the frosted glass windows on the lower floors of things like offices and development spaces so i've done that in the lower uh two side rooms off of the lobby because those are going to be spaces for team leaders and the rooms above those are going to be spaces for team leaders as well. So we have six team leader offices here pretty much right off the atrium, which I think is a cool place for it. It's maybe not the most practical, but it's just it was just something to fill up the space. That was basically what I was looking for was something to fill the space. And so we ended up with, you know, a bunch of offices there and Speaking of filling the space, something I was trying to be conscious with in this entire build was the idea that I wasn't going to overbuild. In Software Inc, it's very easy to build spaces that just have way too much space. And so like this big giant room that we have right here in previous series, in some of my first series, when I would get to this point where I have $225 million, 
I would start playing around with the idea that, hey, that can just be one big development space. We'll just put a team of, you know, 50 people in there and it'll be great. So we'll have the core team be 50 people, game dev, 50 people, operating system development, 150 people. And you would just put them in this one giant room. What I was trying to do here was create interesting spaces and have the windows kind of have a bit of symmetry here and there because that's important to me. But I wanted to create interesting spaces. I wanted to have a lot of the rooms be unique to some degree. So the layouts are slightly different across all of the rooms. The colors are different across all of the rooms. I do end up going with the four Nerdrosoft colors for most of the furniture, at least most of the accent colors. So when I say the color is different across all of the rooms, it's one of four colors, but it does provide a bit of variety whilst also providing a little bit of consistency, which I think is pretty cool. So that's something you'll see in the gameplay part of the video, by the way, as as a point of note, I guess none of the furnishing is going to be in this time lapse. And that's intentional. I kind of I ended up building the, the building, the stuff you're seeing right now. And then at some point, there's going to be a couple of cuts in the time lapse. And the reason for that is because I decided in all of my wisdom is that it would be a great idea while I'm trying to pre-record a bunch of videos for my trip to Sweden. So to make sure that, you know, there's videos on the channel while I'm away, I decided in all of my wisdom in the middle of that, that I wanted to go and make pancakes. So I went and made some pancakes. And that's why, you know, I basically I, I came back from making pancakes and thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to eat these and I'm just going to slowly furnish this entire office. So that's what I did. I, I furnished the office whilst also stuffing my face with freshly made pancakes. And it was a very good choice. They were very, very good. They still are very good. I have one left. And I'm very much looking forward to um to enjoying that when I get done with this, uh, this commentary. Anyway, what we've just done there is uh, go ahead and move the printing space upstairs and use one of those shoots to take the products downstairs. So we have a bit of storage both on this floor and the floor below. And then that little rectangular space next to the pallets is actually going to be some bathrooms. This might be the first time that I've ever actually managed to get some bathrooms into a building sort of by design. Now, admittedly, some of them were not by design, but that one space right there was always intended to be for some bathrooms. So there was at least an attempt to uh, to get some bathrooms into this building. And I like to think that that is a decent little bit of progress. Now, we're going to cut ahead here and we're going to be working on some stairs. This is another thing that I'm trying to be proactive about, because if you don't have stairs to each of the floors in the building, the fire inspector gets very angry. And another thing that I did off camera was try to absolutely cover this place in uh, sprinklers. And as we'll see in the gameplay, well, I won't, I won't spoil it, but we will be addressing, uh, we will have a visit from a fire inspector during the gameplay portion of this video. So we'll see how that ends up going a little bit later on. If you've seen me play Software Inc. before, you're probably going to be keenly aware, or at least you might have an idea of how that might go. It goes fantastically well, I'm sure. Anyway, no spoilers. Like I said, we're not we're not going to be spoiling anything. So at this point, uh, I've mostly built out the the shell of the the building here. We're going to be going to the right side here in just a moment and figuring out what to do with uh, with all of that. Originally, I was actually thinking I would just put a roof on the the two story section of the building and just have that be that. Essentially, the part on the side, the two story part was going to be like a little sort of extension that might have been built at one point. It wasn't originally part of the building that changes ever so slightly. I end up putting some grass on top of it. I end up doing some uh, some outdoor seating up there and we do some smaller offices as well. So it ends up being a really good space and it actually does get used a little bit later on. Again, we'll see in the gameplay portion that the uh, the 2D team and the 3D team will both have uh, moved into that little sort of extended part of this building. And I think it looks pretty good. It's definitely one of the more unique parts of the building, which is exciting enough, I suppose. It's definitely something a little bit different to what we have going on here with sort of the atrium carrying our way up through the main part of the building than the one corridor dividing the two development spaces at the back. It's just 
it's it's a building that I'm really happy with. I think this is the the one building I've put sort of the most thought into throughout all of my time playing Software Inc. And now we're moving on to painting the thing a little bit, getting some texture in here. And I'll be honest, I'm kind of a sucker for the sort of white walls and then wood paneling thing that I'm going for here. So it's basically what we go for throughout the entire building. Even the floors on the inside of most of the building are going to sort of match that wooden accent that we have on the pillars on the outside of the building. And that's sort of the theme for the entire thing. We have a lot of white furniture. We have some very strong accent colors. We have that nice sort of warmish wood tone throughout the entire structure as well. And I think it just comes together for a really solid sort of end product. I did have to make some tweaks to the building here and there just to sort of carry those pillars up through the, uh, the sides here and for the, the overhang that we have over the, uh, the side of the building as well. But I'm, I am really pleased with the, uh, the end result here, I think you will be as well. And I think, I think you kind of get where we're at with this. So I think we can go ahead and we can get into the gameplay. We can get to work. We can have Nerdrasoft continue to support King Doom 6, I think it is, that we're up to now. And if all goes well, maybe we start working on a little operating system today. Let's, uh, let's get into the gameplay. And here we are. Our Nerdrasoft has a new headquarters. It's a bit shorter than the last one. It's a bit shorter than the skyscraper that we were just in, but I'm kind of happy with how this has turned out. And I think it's probably not a bad idea to walk you through what we've got here because not everything was shown off in the time lapse. And I'm also going to say that I'm recording this part of the video before I sit down to do the commentary for the time lapse. So I might be repeating myself a little bit. I'm going to try not to. But it might be. So we're going to have to ignore the dirt on the ground, but we have ourselves a bit of a reception here. It's got two reception desks and two security desks on either side as well. We also have a bunch of security cameras around the place. And now these guys are all positioned sort of strategically. We don't have them all through the building, but we have them at choke points. So if anyone was to come in here and try and rob the place, they would have to walk past a security camera in one way, shape or form. A lot of these rooms, if not all of these rooms here at the front of the building next to the atrium, I guess, these are all leaders offices. So we have them sort of designed differently here and there. Similar sort of idea throughout all of them, but just, you know, things at angles, things not at angles. I think it looks pretty good. We got me right in here just chilling with a picture of my cat or well, of good old software ink cat at the uh, very least. I've also got the best employer award right here on my wall. I figured that was, that was an award that I think I should have in my office. And speaking of the rest of the awards, you can, you can do this. And I thought this was such a cool place to put all of the, the awards that the company has so far. And they are in order from 95 up to 2003 thus far. So if we happen to get some more of these, we're going to move down and start going across this, this lower section of the shelves as well. I just love how this has turned out. I love the sort of multi-story thing that we have going on with this atrium. It's such, it's such a cool space. I really, really do enjoy how it's turned out. All of the rooms at the back and all through the place are all functional as well. So obviously we can turn some labels on. We have the marketing team in here. We have the accounting team back here. And a lot of these spaces are considerably larger than the the old ones in terms of capacity so we can go ahead and start to expand some of these teams as well which i'm very very excited about we get the marketing team we get the core team here antivirus over this way we got some more team leaders we've got the support team down here and again the support team can be expanded quite a bit as well which i'm really looking forward to to doing and then moving up again, we've got our 2D team spread across a few rooms. I thought this would be kind of interesting. We've got the 3D team upstairs as well, spread across a few rooms. I did get a little bit impatient and a little bit lazy with these ones. You might notice that the layouts are exactly the same. But moving this way, we have the audio team. We have the audio team leaders, antivirus leaders, antivirus is down here. Basically, we have space to expand because we're not using any of these spaces up here and we're not using this one back here either. Now I did go ahead and get ourselves a main production server down here. It's kind of at the back of the space. And obviously we do have all this printing capacity as well, but we have a production server down here. This is what things are going to be running on. And then up this way, we have our little development server. So we have 
two servers throughout the building. It's basically going to just keep things nice and easy for us. Right now we have Nerdsoft Play and King Doom 6 running on the production server. We have nothing being developed, I think, on the development server. So we should probably get around to that. But first, it would appear that we have employees complaining about not being able to find food, which is fair enough. Be wait, why were you in there with food? Oh, they went to the vending machine. <laughs> yeah, I put a vending machine in the security office because I figured that would be kind of funny. And I think my employees are going into the security office to use the vending machine. I, I don't know how I feel about that. What we should see happening at some point, though, and there we go. Yeah, we've got we got someone just going straight through. What we should see happening, and I think it'll be a case from uh, from tomorrow. We should have some cooks coming in here. May Gibson retired. What team are you on? Accounting. We need to get more people into that accounting team and possibly into the audio team as well. But let's go ahead and speed things up. Let's see how things are going. We should have some staff. Ooh, I don't like this. Hold on a minute. I was fined. That's fine. People have canceled the uh, distribution deal. That's fine. A product has run out of stock and you're losing sales. King Doom 6. Interesting. It sold over a million units. We have 578 in stock. Are we we are printing this, right? Start printing King Doom 6. We we should be. Uh, printing King Doom 6. We should have some of it laying around down here. Yeah, 25,000 on that pallet. We've got 27,000 on that pallet. I would imagine we've got, let's see, 46,000 waiting to head out. So hopefully some couriers can come by and start to pick all of this up. We have got some people using this back door for the place that I really would prefer they didn't do, but because that's fair enough. It is is what it is. I'm not seeing any couriers yet. There's my security, though, which is great. So we're going to have people sort of stood at all of the doors, and we should have people going into the security room to work the cameras, which is great news. Still no sign of any couriers, though. So actually, no, some things I think have been picked up. We might just need more of them is is what I'm thinking. We have a multi-story parking lot over here. I'm thinking that's a uh, that's going to be a courier right there, isn't it? I think we need more. And I think we might want to get a parking lot a little bit closer to the building. So let's just, and I really hate having to do this, but let's buy this and let's just turn this into a parking lot. It's, it's not exactly, it's not exactly fancy, but you know what? We're going to do it anyway. So we'll go for, let's see, you know what I kind of want to do? I kind of want to do, I kind of want to do this and I kind of want to do this. So we have like this dedicated little parking space because I'm pretty sure I can actually assign these guys to only be for couriers. Yeah. So I think deliveries is what we're going to be looking for, right? So deliveries should mean couriers, I would imagine. I think we can do a road here as well. So that continues straight through. It does look a little bit silly, but then what we can do is sort of surround this with some bicycle parking. And I think that's okay. I actually, you know, you know what? No. <laughs> I don't know if that is okay, actually. I don't I don't know if I like that. I think what I'd rather do is maybe just a little bit of maybe a little bit of a path around this would be nice. I don't know. I want to make it look interesting, I think. And you know what? I think this is much better. I think this is exactly what we're looking for, though. I will say we might want to turn those parking lots around. I think there's they're ever so slightly facing the wrong way. I think that. Oh, wait, no, it just looks weird regardless. I think I think this is just going to look weird regardless. So we'll do the parking lots this way and we'll just make sure that they're assigned for deliveries and we'll hope for the best is what we'll do there. We can sincerely hope for the best that my my couriers. There we go. That's what I want to see. So that's going to be a bit quicker for them. Reasonably, I probably should have just got like this plot right here. But now I've got like a little park thing in front of my building and it just looks so much better. So I'm just going to commit to that, I think, is is what I'm going to do. Now, let's take a bit of a look and see how we're doing on a couple of different fronts right here. So King Doom 6 has a lot of verified bugs right now. Now, what did we use to build it? We also have a few verified bugs for Nerdsoft Play. It might not be a bad idea to start working on a sequel to that as well. I think we can cancel support for King Doom 5. Uh, Longsword is doing just fine. Vector, we can cancel support there as well. And Canvas, there's a lot of verified bugs. People aren't going to love it if I cancel support, but I'm going to do it anyway. 
we're going to sort of strip things back a little bit because now we're in a pretty good spot with our own building and our own people, all of the teams, all of that good stuff. We can start to build bigger and better from this point going forward. So let's start with King Doom and let's just try to update absolutely everything. Now, I would like to update the 3D, 2D and systems as much as possible with our own things. So for the 2D editor, it's Photo Suite 2 right now. For the 3D editor, it's none of those. And the audio tool is Wave 5. So let's go through and update our own things first. So Wave 5 is doing okay, but let's, let's get an update going there. We can bring the 2D, actually we can't bring the 2D up to scratch because we need to go to Canvas 2 first, which is a few years old at this point, but we're gonna update it anyway because we wanna use it in some updates for some other things. So Canvas 2 is going to be handled by, it's a 2D editor. We can get the 2D team to do it. So go ahead and work on that. Wave 5 is going to have to wait. And then I guess Vector is even older. We need to make a new version of Vector, but let's, let's bring this up to date anyway, as much as we possibly can. And we will try and use it in our update as well. So both of those need to get done before we can really do all that much. Longsword, is it doing okay? How is it looking in terms of bugs? It has quite a few. So let's get Longsword going as well. We'll go ahead and move that to the antivirus team. It doesn't need anything in there sorted out. In fact, Longsword, wait. Oh, the original Longsword's right there. I forgot we're sort of automating this. Interesting. Why does the original Longsword have so many users? It's got more active users than the previous one. I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that. I guess we'll go ahead and update it anyway, which, wait, that's Longsword too. So finish that update. Yeah, update Longsword. I don't, I don't love this. I'm not going to bring the 2D uh, up to date because we can't use our own thing for it, but we will fix those. We'll do development for the source control and we'll get that going. Some of my electronics are being affected by the heat. That's, that's fair enough. I didn't put anything in there to cool that down. So we might want to, uh, might want to do something about that. A little bit of uh, industrial ventilation might be a pretty solid idea on that one. And that brings the room down to, by the looks of it, negative 10 degrees, which is exactly what we're looking for. So that'll keep those servers happy. These ones down here are in a room that's 13 degrees. That's fair enough. It's not terrible. Oh, we've been nominated for some awards and we just got best employer again. Oh, <laughs> don't mind if I do. Most profitable product is also me. By quite a margin, King Doom 6 has has become ridiculously profitable. That's so good. And we just released Longsword 3 as well. You know what? Let's go ahead and update Longsword. Let me get my uh let me get my new awards in here. So we've got most profitable product. It's gonna go down here. And then best employer 2004. We've been the best employer for two years running. Look at that! That's not bad. I'm actually really really pleased with that that's that's great uh so here's a question six companies have requested access to my digital distribution platform that's surprising that they've all come back um so right interesting uh <laughs> so how is longsword 3 doing it's great that's actually pretty good i'm really surprised that they're churning these things out so quickly uh fair enough i mean it's got some active users let's start printing it. We don't really need, I doubt we're going to need that many. So we'll do a maximum of like 50,000 on this thing and say that that's going to be good enough for, uh, for Longsword 3. And we'll just let them keep doing what they're doing. They're doing great work already. So we'll just let the antivirus project just sort of tick along kind of like the, uh, the audio tool, which actually, interestingly, wave six is due to go out this month. So here's hoping it actually does go out usually the project management things release something early in the day so i'm a little bit concerned that wave six hasn't gone out the door i mean it looks like it should be done right they're in the beta phase they got some followers it's releasing this month apparently a little bit concerned that it's not gone out the door there we go so is wave six any good it's it's good and it probably needs to be in a few more a uh, few more platforms so actually Let's go ahead and get my antivirus team porting Longsword. Let's look at active users and recent releases. We've got you. We've got you. 
and we'll go for you as well. So we'll get it on those three platforms. Wave six is going to be a similar story. Give that to my audio team. And we're going to be looking at a couple of platforms here as well. So we'll go for, uh, we'll go for those four, I guess is, oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I want. Uh, we'll go for those four and that should be just fine. And let's see, how did it do? So wave six did not do very well. Neither did Longsword. Neither, neither one of them is, um, is, is doing it. Wait, no, wait, what was the profit last month? Oh, that's a little bit better. A couple of hundred thousand, not bad. King Doom 6 is still doing ridiculously well, so no complaints there. We are approaching $250 million, despite the fact that we... I mean, to be fair, this building only cost about $5 million to build, so... Reasonably, this was ridiculously cheap, actually. You have furniture that your staff is unable to reach. What do you... Oh! Oh, I always forget that you kind of do need to build access into these things. So if I go into here and grab something like an open gate, I can do this. And now they can uh, they can get in there to, to fix those if they need to. Which I'm assuming that's, that's what they're complaining about. It's going to be the same story down here, though, and I really don't like having to do this because it means that my, uh, my little, like, edging thing, edging's really not the word I was looking for there. <laughs> well, it is. That, to be fair, it is. That is what you call, it's a sight. It's like a, it's not a sighting. It is, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Forget it. We're just going to put some little, going to put some little things in here just to open up these, these sections so people can get in there. I don't actually think they need to get into these ones because there's no lights. So actually we'll delete that one. We will delete uh, this one and we'll delete that one. And it's completely fine. Let's, uh, let's get this canvas to update out. I'm just going to push it out the door because I now want to go and update. What was I going to update? Was it King Doom? I think it was going to update. I've actually <laughs> I've already forgotten what I was going to do. It's been a long day, man. This whole thing, I probably mentioned it in the time lapse, but this whole thing did take a while to uh, to put together. I'll tell you what. Let's 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 look at our bugs. So yeah, King Doom has a lot. Let's go through networking. Let's get audio up here. Let's get 3D up here, 2D up here, and systems. The 2D editor is going to be Canvas 2. The 3D editor is going to be Vector, and the audio tool is going to be neither of mine. Of course, it's not. Okay. Why is it going to be neither of mine? Why is that the case? Is that because Wave 6 hasn't been updated to modern standards somehow? That I find very hard to believe. That's uh, interesting. That's very, very interesting that apparently it's just somehow not. How did it? How did they release it? And it just wasn't good enough immediately. Whatever the case, my core team's now working on a pretty major update for Kingdom 6. It's going to bring it up to modern standards. It's going to fix probably closer to a thousand bugs by the time the update actually goes out. But that's going to be good. And that's sort of what we're looking for. We've got Wave 7 being designed right now. The next phase is going to be July 2005, aiming for a July 2007 release. That is a ways out. Interesting. OK, I'll, I'll allow it. And then Longsword 4 is aiming for May 2006. So we've got a couple of years now where we're not necessarily going to, we're not necessarily gonna have anything going out. So this might be my opportunity to start looking at operating systems or to start looking at other things in general. We also have deals coming in. So we have marketing, we have print jobs. I remember, I wanna say when deals first came around, you could get deals for hosting and make ridiculous money by just putting other people's stuff on your servers. I I miss that. I mean, it was ridiculously, ridiculously good. It made it made things very easy, but it was it was fun as well. We're also doing crazy numbers with Kingdom Six still. It is just continuing to sell more and more and more, which I'm completely okay with. I do want to make sure that it's on all of the modern platforms though. So let's give it to the core team. Honestly, give it to the 3D team as well. Any any team that doesn't have a task, actually. So we can see here, audio team has two right now. Core has one. These guys have none. Antivirus has five. So we'll give it to the two teams that have no tasks. And we'll go ahead and just put this on. You know what? Just put it on everything. Just, just put it. Well, you know what? We probably don't need to put it on those ones. We'll put it. Is this, when did this come out? December, 2003. So almost a year ago. It's got 17,000 users. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do these two for the uh, the King Doom port right there, just to make sure that 
it actually has people that are you know gonna keep on buying it that's that's the goal there oh the fire inspector will be visiting my company tomorrow make sure what did that say what do you what do you need me to make sure make sure fire safety is in order yeah so here's the interesting thing about fire safety i have got you might notice them all of these sprinklers around the place and they're kind of everywhere much like the lights the lights are really messy i'm gonna turn all those off actually because they're horrible to look at i'm hoping that i've got enough sprinklers i'm sure there's some rooms that don't have any but i'm hoping that the majority do in fact have sprinklers and that we're going to be okay here this might be one of the first buildings where i actually do make an effort to wait hold on a minute we have first off 11 million basically in stocks that's worrying second off big server rack and third how is wave six out of stock are we printing this thing i don't know that we are I don't think I don't think we were. <laughs> Whoops. Let's do 75,000 of those in stock at all times, please. Uh King Doom by the way. Just I just want to point this out. Last month it did something. We can look at the details. Last month it did so it peaked there in October 2004. 7.2 million, then down to 5.5 and then somehow coming into January 534,000. Now, this thing has sold 1.9 million copies. There is a consumer reach of 4.5 million, so I'm hoping we can do better. I also want to have a quick look and see profit-wise, King Doom 6 has uh, actually... That's, that's cool. It's more than doubled the profits from Wave 5, which is exactly what we're looking for. That's... that's oh, I'm very happy about that. Very, very happy about that. Uh, King Doom 5 was pretty profitable as well it's uh although here's the question if i open my archived stuff ah there's what i was looking for i forgot that kingdom 3 was supposed to be in here so it has passed it has passed kingdom 3 which is great the final installment in the uh in the original series i guess it's i'm i'm very happy that uh that kingdom 6 has done as well as it's been doing i am just a little concerned that the profits dropped off so massively a drop of $5 million is, um, is a lot. I'm a little, little concerned about that. Hopefully the update that we have going out will fix that, but, uh, we might, we might, we might want to start working on a little something, something. We failed. What do you mean 46 fire alarm violations? You need to have fire alarms in each room above 10 square meters with flammable objects or in adjacent rooms. If it's less than that, that's fine. Can I... So which rooms? Wait, did I miss the entire ground floor? Wait, no, I do have sprinklers in there, though. I think. Yeah, I do I do have sprinklers in these rooms. Hold on a minute. So, furnish. And, I guess, utility. And these guys. If I press L. I have a sprinkler right there. Unless I have to add more? Oh, man. I really don't want to have to add more sprinklers, but I might, I might just have to. I have them in here as well. I've got them in, do I just, I, I feel like I just need more per, per room. So this room was fine. This room was not. This is, this is going to be slightly worrying if I have to, uh, oh man. I don't want to have to completely cover every room with, with sprinklers. I might, I might just eat the fines. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I might, I might just eat the fines. It's not, it's not the end of the world. It's not that much money. So that, that might be what we do. I, I don't like it. I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a fan of that, but you know what? It's fine. I also think, yeah, the audio team just lost their leader and is no longer under HR management. That's a problem. The support team's also down to four people. Accounting's down to five. So let's get the audio team a new leader. So lead secondary is going to be programmer. That's fine. And then compatibility with my audio team. I'd also kind of like HR management and automation. I kind of need both of those. So let's begin looking. We've got you that can do both, which is great. So Leah Pierce, I think you are going to be, you're going to be hired is what you're going to be. We'll go ahead and manage the employees here. We'll go to you and set your role as leader doing, I guess those as secondary. And so that should keep us good in the audio team. 
HR management is still going ahead, which is great. This thing is unassigned. I guess Leah Pierce is going to be heading that up. So now we are hopefully sorted with the uh, with the audio tools. That might slow things down a little bit. That'd be kind of worrying if Wave 7 gets slowed down a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. Anyway, I think it might be an idea to start looking at an operating system. I think I think we're at that point where we can start considering this because we have a lot of teams. They are doing a lot of things, but we can sort of have them juggle things here and there, I'm sure. So that's I kind of I, I think that's what we're going to do. We're also going to be going for doors as the the name for this as per as per usual. It's going to be a computer operating system, so we don't have to make any hardware. And I guess we'll go for something relatively basic to start with. I mean, this isn't going to really comp compete with uh, compete with anything at this point, but we'll see what happens. We'll do some uh, we'll do some networking. I think we'll go pretty hard on the uh, on the networking front right there. And then for audio, we can do surround sound. We can do speech recognition. I think that'll be fine. And then for the systems, we'll do user accounts. We'll do plug and play. We'll do multitasking. A lot of wasted interest in this right now, which is not great, but that's fine. We'll do a windowing system. We'll do notifications. I might take some things out of here. I think we'll take out, let's see, plug and play, file encryption. I don't know if we need any of these. The app store could come out. It is a bit early for an app store, but I don't know. I mean, this also has a lot of market targeting in here. So maybe let's see. Let's take the app store out for now. Let's take speech recognition out for now. We'll do surround sound. I think that's fine and notifications with a windowing system. Got to be a lot of wasted interest, but that's that's completely fine. We're also going to go in here at uh, hmm, let's do 110 as our price. We'll go a little bit low. I mean, it wants to do 150. Let's do 125. We'll go a little bit lower. The server it runs on is going to be production. The SCM is going to be development. It's an original IP. It's going to be a new framework. I mean, it, I think it has to be. So it'll be the, the doors engine is what we'll call it, I guess. And that should be okay. So onto the next page, we aren't putting it on any operating systems because it is one. In terms of market, we kind of want to push. So simplicity is kind of the top thing right now. So we sort of want to go more for security and customization over uh, simplicity. So we'll go ahead and push in that direction. I think that's a good shout. We're still going to have a lot of wasted interest, but that's fine. And then I want my lead designer on this. I would like it to be me, but I don't think I get it to be me. Unless I maybe go and set my uh, my core team as... Can I have it be me? There we go. I want me to lead this up. I just... I, it feels it feels like it should be, right? So the core team can actually just take this up solo. We have not really got enough people to do it, but we, we could. So we'll do systems. We'll put the 2D and the 3D teams on here since we are doing a lot with that we can do the audio team in here as well i think that's probably fair enough because we're doing some audio stuff so we'll throw those guys onto the project and now we have 45 out of the recommended 11 designers having more than the suggested amount of employees in the development teams will result in diminishing returns so you're paying more salaries but getting a smaller and smaller increase in speed so it is going to be faster it's just getting to a point where it's not going to be there's only so fast that it can be. I'm okay with that. Some of those guys are better. Actually, you know what? The audio team, we we have some, I mean, what do we need? Like level two audio. We have enough people, I think, that can handle the, the audio side of things. I think we'll be okay with this. Networking, we can do across everything. Let's just start developing this. Let's, let's throw it out there. Let's get it going. It's going to be a few years before it's done, but... I think it's about time that we get working on doors, and I think it's about time that Nerdrosoft takes that step. And then, wait, what do you mean burglars? Okay, we were, they did try to rob us. They didn't get very far. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, I think it's about time Nerdrosoft takes that step, and I think it's about time that we, yeah, I, I think, I think we focus on it. I think we go pretty hard on it. Once the King Doom uh, update is done, I think we can go pretty hard on, on getting doors out the door. You have been nominated for an award in three out of four categories. Best employer is once again me. By a considerable margin, might I add. We are we are the best employer. What's that? Three years running? 
best product is not me this time. That was wave six got third and most profitable was also me with longsword three. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. What do you mean most prop nine mil? How? They're actually doing all right. Now that I look at them, they're, they're, they're doing all right. I'm kind of glad we've got those automated to be quite honest with you. They're, they're doing, they're doing good. Uh, we are having trouble keeping up with support for a few things. Nerdsoft Play, for example, is up to 10.3 million uh, users. So I have just expanded my my support team. We should have, hopefully, we should have four more people coming in to, uh, to deal with things here. Assuming they haven't all gone on vacation, which is a very real possibility. Yeah, there's only, oh no, there they are. There's, there's five of them, which is better than, better than there was before. It seems like they're starting to get through the tickets as well, which is great news. So yeah, none queued for King Doom, none queued for play. That'll keep people nice and happy. A few bugs there, but I do think, I think maybe once doors is, again, out the door, we can start looking at, uh, I don't know, maybe getting ourselves Nerdrisoft play too. What can we not keep up with now? Antivirus? Really? I mean, yeah, I guess it is relatively popular. Are we doing... So let me see here. Support teams. Oh, that's why they're doing support themselves. Give that over to the support team. I don't know what you think you're doing, you maniacs. We'll make sure that they're not doing that. And the audio tool is also support team. Yeah. Okay, that might have been my bad. I might have I might have screwed up somewhere along the ways there, but at least it's been sorted out now. So hopefully everybody's going to be doing what I want them to be doing. And you know, I almost forgot to do this. So let's just get that up there. Three years running, best employer. Then we had, what was it? Best product of 2005. We got bronze for that one, which is fine. And most profitable product as well. There we go. Look at that. We've had the most profitable product three years running as well. So what was it? Wave five and then Kingdom six and then Longsword three. Not bad. Not bad at all. We've also pushed the update for Kingdom six out the door. It was starting to slow down massively towards the end, so I figured just getting it out there was for the best. And it has actually revitalized sales in Kingdom 6 just a little bit as well, so that's great news. It also means that all of my development teams are going to be going all in on the doors design phase, which is fantastic news. So I guess at this point, it's a bit of a waiting game for doors to be done. We also have 34 deals that have been offered to us. What do we got? Let's have a little look here. Support, print jobs, hosting. Interesting. Okay, okay, okay. We'll put that in the production server. I don't see why not. We'll do a little bit of hosting there for these guys and see if that gets us any money. But I do think we can leave it there for today. We've managed to build a new headquarters for Nerdrasoft. There's still room to expand. So if I decide that I want to put in some kind of you know, office software team. We absolutely have the room to do that. We could potentially use this tiny little office back here. And then these upstairs spaces, I almost want to get a dedicated game development team. Not to do King Doom. I don't think we're going to do that, but I think we could do... I don't know. We might want to start trying to churn out like a year, not yearly, but every other year, some kind of sports game or some kind of shooter. We've been, I mean, King Doom was what? An adventure game? So we could try and have some other, I mean, a first person shooter seems like the way to go. So I think having a dedicated game development team churning out a first person shooter every couple of years, kind of the way we're doing with, you know, Wave and, and Longsword, I think we could get away with that. But for now, I think we can leave it there. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. It has been an absolute pleasure as always. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.